Hello and welcome to Cataclysm Quick Tip number 66, Lab Turrets, the Spoiler Edition. So as noted in the title, this is a spoiler-heavy episode of Cataclysm Quick Tips. If you don't want to be spoiled on some various ways to deal with the turrets in labs, then don't watch this video. For everybody else, welcome. This is going to be a video in a few parts. I've got a lot of information to cover and I do want to keep it fairly quick. So I'm going to put some edits in here on occasion to uh, hasten things along. So first up, let's kind of set the stage. If you're doing a lab escape scenario, one of the primary obstacles that you have to face is the turret that's at the top of the lab just in front of the exit door. There are some not so obvious ways to get past that turret, and I get asked this question constantly in special reference to EMP grenades. So EMP grenades were basically removed from the game for crafting purposes. They can no longer be crafted uh, as they were in the past. It was a fairly easy thing to craft if you knew what to get and how to do it. But uh, EMP grenades are no longer craftable by the player. They can be achieved in game through loot or through other sources that uh, I'm not gonna go into right now. But uh, the easy way of getting past the turret by crafting up some EMP grenades and tossing them at it is gone. So, I get asked a lot, oh my god, how do I get out of the turret? I don't have my EMP grenades anymore. I'm going to demonstrate a few not-so-obvious ways that you can use to get past the turrets. So first up, I want to talk about the turret abilities and stats. And by that, I mean we're going to go look at one and I'm going to talk about it. So, this is a lab escape here. We are actually at the final staircase up to the next level. Now, I do want to talk about the character a bit. So this is a pretty standard character. The only thing I've done is give him 10 strength. And then down here, if you look, we've got uh, two throwing skill. So 10 strength and two throwing skill. That's it. Otherwise, he's a bog standard generic character. And I'll show you why I set those two things here in just a minute. But let's talk about night vision first. That's probably the most important thing to know initially. Let's go ahead and go up the stairs. So here is the top floor of a standard old style lab. And we have our door here, key card reader. I'm not going to talk about how to get through the door and all that kind of stuff, but uh, what you should be aware of is there is a turret located in front of the door. It's usually five spaces in. In this orientation of the lab, it's going to be five spaces in and on the south wall. So if we go from here, for example, this position here, one, two, three, four, five. That should be a turret right there. And that's what we're going to talk about and what we're going to try to get past. So the first thing I want to mention is the night vision for the turrets. They have exactly four spaces of night vision. If you stand five spaces or further away, they can't see you, assuming it's dark. Now, I'm going to have a short side note here. Be very, very careful in any kind of variable lighting conditions. And what I mean by that is, if you're in an area where it's dark in one section but light in another, be super, super cautious. Uh, the game has some issues with variable lighting, and you can get yourself shot even when you're supposedly back in the very dark area. So just be very cautious. But we're going to assume that everything is completely dark in this particular example. So there is a turret at that position where the cursor is. It can only see four spaces, so I'm perfectly safe to approach up to five spaces away. Now right now, I've only got two spaces of night vision. That is pretty standard. In the past, night vision was perception divided by three, but after some changes to the lighting system, players effectively lost one space of night vision, and now if you have nine perception, you're only going to get two spaces. There is a way, not around it, but uh, what I want to point out is if we go to the player and we go ahead and edit him, we're going to go ahead and give him, as an example, nine perception first. And you'll see my night vision did not change. Oh, that good old fun message. <laughs> then we're going to go ahead and give the player 11 perception. Go ahead it again, and stats, perception, 11. 11 will get you just enough to overcome that loss of night vision that uh, the players received. So as you can see now, we just gained one extra space. So I mention this specifically because if you're trying to out-vision the night, the night vision on the turrets, you need to get to the magic number of 5. <laughs> so if you take 11 perception, and then you also give yourself the night vision trait during character generation which we've just done right there. We now have night vision. You can see one, two, three, four, five. We have five spaces of night vision. That's one more than the turret gets, so we should be able to spot it before it actually sees us. So we're gonna turn on safe mode. We're gonna walk our way over there. And there's the turret right there. Notice he has not seen me. He has not started shooting at me or anything. If we check the distance, 
M249 Autonomous Crows, distance five spaces, and he is not shooting at me or uh, aware of my presence in any way. So, if your intent is to outvision the night vision on the turrets, Perception 11 plus night vision during character generation will get you that ability. Or higher, of course, but it's a little hard to get more than that during character gen. Now, if I try to step forward even a single space, that puts me within their four night vision range. I'm going to demonstrate it because there's a particular reason that you need to know this. Even if you cannot see the turret, if you're moving at a certain speed, you're, meaning your keyboard presses, you're actually going to be okay. Because of this next thing. If I step forward, after I turn safe mode off, so this tile set gives a little warning message indicating that he has now spotted me. That's what that red exclamation point means. And if you note here in our log, we've got a hostile detected message. So the turrets warn you when they detect you. You get this hostile detected message and you have an opportunity to back away. So if I back up, now it no longer sees me. I'm outside of his detection range. And if I just pass time, nothing happens. It can't shoot me. So if we step forward again, it sees me. It, once again, it gives the hostile detected message, but it hasn't started firing. And it's not going to because it has a 200 action point aiming time. So it gives you opportunity to actually back away. Now, the one thing I don't like, and I hope somebody will fix, is if you have safe mode on, that hostile detected audio cue does not trigger safe mode. So this is usually what gets people in trouble, even with the night vision, is they're moving at a fast clip like this, they get the hostile detected message, but they don't actually have time to stop. And safe mode will not trigger on the hostile detected message, the audio cue. I wish it did. So somebody go, go make a PR, please, <laughs> to let the hostile detected audio cue actually trigger a safe mode stop. That would be wonderful. Uh, but just be warned, it doesn't work currently. So if you step into the range of that thing and you get the hostile detected message, but you've pressed your key too many times, you're going to walk into its range and get yourself shot. All right, so... That's the vision range. You're perfectly safe to sit here five spaces. You won't get shot ever from five spaces away in the complete dark. So next thing I want to talk about is the, uh, the ammo capacity. That turret has 1,600 rounds. This is pertinent because in the past, another strategy was to drag zombie corpses up top, not pulped ones. You would kill them and then drag them up here, wait a while to let them reanimate. They would then get shot by the turret, which would deplete its ammo. Then they would reanimate again a few hours later, get shot again. That could work if you could stay alive in the lab long enough to deplete the ammo supply of the old turrets, but they only had like 100 rounds. So 1,600 rounds, you're not likely to outweigh this turret. So don't bother trying that. It's not really going to be effective in any way. So it has 1,600 rounds of ammo. It's got the warning message and it has the 200 point aiming time. That aiming time also gives you the opportunity to actually walk past a doorway or across a doorway and not get shot by one of these turrets. So it usually is pretty easy to avoid getting shot by turrets if you're careful in a few specific ways. All right, so that's the end of this particular section. I'm going to put a cut in here and we'll be back in a second for the next section. Okay, let's talk about light and flashlights, any kind of light. Just real quick, this will be a short one. Uh, it is safe to turn on a flashlight as the simplest example. What you want to avoid is turning on the flashlight, performing any other action, and then trying to turn it off again. So if we go ahead and activate a flashlight, you can see we've got the hallway completely illuminated. We can see the turret. The turret can also see me. The exclamation point there demonstrates that, as well as if we check it here, we can see the exclamation point indicating that it has spotted me. So as long as I just immediately turn the flashlight off again without performing any other actions, we won't get shot. It'll give us the hostile detected message, but then the light goes out in time that it cannot aim at us. So we're perfectly fine. So turn it on, get your bearings, check your ranges, check your distances, whatever you need to do, and then immediately turn it off and you should be fine. If you do any kind of actions, I give no guarantees. They're likely to get shot because the light effect will still be on you long enough that will actually get the shot off. So be very, very cautious, but flip it on, check it, flip it off. You should be fine. All right, let's go ahead and move into the next demonstration. Okay, for the third topic, let's actually demonstrate one of the not so obvious ways to deal with the turret. So I mentioned earlier that uh, I set this character up specifically with 10 strength and two throwing skill. So if we go down here, we've got our two throwing skill and 10 strength. 
10 strengths, not outrageous. It's a fairly standard number that people will take for most of their characters. And throwing skill of two is easily achieved just by picking up some small items, creating a target practice, a practice dummy, and you can toss them at the dummy for a while, and you'll get to two skill for throwing very, very quickly and easily. Now, you can use variable amounts of these two things, strength and throwing skill, for the following purpose. So we're going to utilize our vision advantage here. We're going to go ahead and get the turret spotted. So we are standing five spaces away. We are outside its detection range. And I'm just going to throw things at it. And uh, let's see what happens. So for this demonstration, I've got two items in my inventory I'm going to demonstrate for this. We have lumps of steel and we have pipes. Pipes are pretty easy to come by in a lab. Lumps of steel are a little tougher. But uh, if you can see any or grab any lumps of steel, scoop them up and uh, use them for this purpose. So we can throw... We can throw a lump of steel at the turret. We had a thud, but we didn't do any damage. Let's go ahead and do another one. And notice that we hit the turret for one damage. Bro, another one. We hit it for two damage that time. We hit it for another point. Let's try the pipes this time. No damage. There's a single point of damage. And so on. I think you get the idea. So, if we take a look at the hit points, we are doing damage. It's going to take a little while at this damage level. And that's where the strength and the throwing skill come in. There is a certain minimum sweet spot that you have to achieve to even be able to do one point of damage. But with just a few points of throwing and a little bit of strength, you can get this damage up to three to four points per hit. And you can very quickly demolish a turret. So if we just do a couple of simple things, like change our skill, we're going to go ahead and just add in one more extra throwing skill. And let's just for, again, demonstration, put one more point on our strength. So we'll bring that to 11. So we're going to go three throwing skill, strength 11. Let's get our stamina back so we don't have to listen to the breathing. And we'll go ahead and toss some more. I'm just going to keep tossing lumps of steel. There's a three point hit. Oops, there we go. Two point hit, three point hit. So it escalates pretty quickly. You can see now we're making a lot of really good progress. So it just depends on what level of throwing skill you feel like achieving, either by taking the points at the start of the game during character gen, or by just really, really practicing a lot of throwing in the, uh, in the lab. But extremely common materials you can come across, especially the pipes, and uh, a little bit of throwing skill, a little bit of strength, and you're perfectly safe. The turret will never fire back at you. Turrets do not fire back at throwing skills. You can use a staff sling, a sling, just throwing objects like you're seeing me do right here. None of those will trigger a return fire by the turret. So I didn't mention the return fire earlier. Hopefully you're already aware of their ability to do that. If you shoot a turret with either a gun or a bow, a consequence of that action is that it will automatically try to return fire towards you. Even if it can't see you, it's going to fire in your direction. So it's very dangerous, and we'll demonstrate a, a way of dealing with that here in a minute. But uh, you don't have that worry when you're just tossing things at the turret. It won't actually return fire on you. So this method can be used to kill the turrets without difficulty if you just give yourself a little bit of strength and or throwing skill and or <laughs> you just throw a lot of pipes at the turret. You'll eventually destroy it as long as you can even get a single hit. So, all of those are completely safe methods to get rid of the turret without using any kind of uh, extreme measures. And let's go ahead and move on to the next demonstration. Okay, let's show another method for dealing with the turret. So there is a way to get closer to that turret without getting shot. It's a bit tricky. I'm not sure how many people know about this. I've mentioned it uh, quite a few times on various live streams and uh, in various chat forums and all there. So let's go ahead and demonstrate. For this one, we're going to need a couple of items. First up is the super powerful large cardboard box. So if we go to our inventory, I've got two large cardboard boxes with me. I'm going to go ahead and activate one. We're going to place it in front of me and I'm going to step into it. As you can see, my vision cut down because I am now hiding inside the box. It says your sight distance is impaired and the turret also cannot see me because I'm inside the box. If we then go ahead and activate a second box, we can move forward again. We're now two spaces closer to that turret. One more space and we'll have it right where we want it. I could either bring a third box and put it in that next space and move into it, or I can use the grab command to grab the one behind me I can then move it to the new position, let go of it, 
Step into it. And we are now two spaces away from the turret. Again, here's our front doors. One. Do it this way so you can see the cursor. So from here, one, two, three, four, five. That's where the turret is. We are now within reach attack range of that turret. So if I had a reach attack weapon, I could stab the turret from this inside the box with complete safety. So reach attack weapons are a bit tricky when you're in a lab. You're limited in your raw materials that you have access to generally. Many of the reach attack weapons require a long stick. And no, there is no way to get a long stick inside of a lab. Uh, there's no simple solution to that problem. You might find a mop or a broom. I believe it's the broom in most of the recipes that are required. Or pool cue. Pool cue. I don't believe there's many pool cues in the lab either. So it's a little tricky. There are some alternatives, though, if you need a reach attack weapon. Uh, you might be able to put together, depending on what you find in the lab, a pipe spear or sharpened rebar. But there is an easier alternative if you uh, have access to just a little bit of skill and a couple of items. So for this demonstration, I'm going to change my skill setup slightly. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, not that one. We're going to go to the player. We're going to edit the player. And I'm just going to give myself three in each skill for this particular one. So we're going to edit skills. And I'm just going to add three. The reason for that is we're going to attach a bayonet to our rifle. In my inventory, I have an M4A1 rifle and a combat knife. And I think many people aren't aware that you can actually attach the combat knife to a rifle as a bayonet attachment. You do need some minimum skills. It's something like... I forget, Melee 1 and Rifles 2 or something like that. Um, for this purpose, we're just going to go ahead and get it done. I do need to unload the rifle first. Then we're going to activate the Combat Knife. Pick the Attach as Gun Mod. And we can put it on our M4A1. There we go. Now that we've got it attached, we can go ahead and wield that M4A1. I'm not even going to load it. I don't need bullets. And we now have an M4A1 with a Combat Knife successfully attached. That is going to give us the reach attack ability, meaning we can hit two spaces away, just like a spear. Now, you do have to be a little cautious about this, know how to do things. If you note right here where it says weapon, it's in semi-auto mode currently. If I use the capital F key, it can switch to a bayonet mode. Now, if I hit the fire key like normal, it brings up a set target, and I can move the cursor to the right one. I'm going to move it to the right a second time. The cursor is going to disappear, but it is now in the position right over top of the, uh, the turret. If I hit the enter key, we missed that time, so we'll do it again. That time we hit something, we'll do it again. Missed. Hit something. And now we're swinging it at air. This indicates we have killed the turret. The turret's dead. We can just step out. <laughs> there you go. That is the majesty of the large box. You can use multiple large boxes to kind of daisy chain your way right up into reach attack range of a turret, stab it to death with an appropriate reach attack weapon, and you're good to go. There are certain minimum amounts of damage you need to do and so on, but I find that the, uh, the bayonet attached to a rifle is a nice, easy solution. Get any soldier killed in the lab somewhere, and it's very high likelihood you're going to get a rifle and you're going to get a combat knife, and you'll be able to execute this kind of strategy. So there you go. That's the next one. I've got uh, one more. I saved the best for last. I'll be back in just a moment and I'll demonstrate that one. Okay, here we are at the final solution for the lab escape exit turret. This is probably the best and the easiest way to deal with this. All you need is pretty much any gun. If you get any gun, you'll be able to use this method. Now, hopefully you're already aware, as I mentioned earlier in this uh, video, that if you shoot a gun at a turret or a bow at a turret and you do not kill it in one shot, it can and will return fire in your direction, which might kill you. So, yes, you can stand where I'm standing, get nice and close, and then try to blast it. I would recommend you do so with the highest caliber weapon you have available to you. Don't use a, a, a tiny, tiny little pistol, a 22 caliber or something like that. Use the biggest caliber gun you've got. Set it to burst mode if you like. Shotgun works pretty well. But you can most often kill this turret from this kind of range without too much difficulty. If you don't kill it, though, you will probably get shot. So I do have a solution to that problem. And that solution is extremely simple. You come up top here to this hallway. You find out where the turret's at, depending on your orientation of your lab. 
and you want to utilize these two door spaces. So if the turret is on this wall, you want to use the opposite wall, open the two doors on the far side. So we'll open these two doors and we're going to stand here. Now, the reason you have to open both doors is you will not have line of sight on the turret if this door is closed, and I'm going to demonstrate that. So we're going to do a few things here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and mutate the player briefly. We're going to turn this off again in a moment. But we're going to turn on invincibility. I'm also going to bump up our night vision slightly. So we're going to go ahead and go to full night vision. All right, so now we've got better range, and as you can see, I can actually see the turret from this position. If I close this door, I don't have line of sight to the turret. So open both doors, then stand in this space, the one furthest from the turret, in whichever direction your lab is facing. Just stand in the opposite wall's doors, furthest from the turret. From this position, I'm going to pull out a BB gun for demonstrations. And we don't actually need the, uh, the invulnerability for this one. So let's go ahead and uh, turn that off just so I can prove the point. There we go. We've... We've turned off invincibility. And I'm going to shoot that turret. And you're going to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to fire at the turret. Fire at the turret again. Actually, I should aim. And there's the return fire. So we plinked the turret with a BB. That does trigger its auto fire. Notice I'm just fine. I'm, I'm, oh my god, I'm still alive. How about we shoot it again? Oh my god, I'm still alive. Hey, I haven't been hit yet. Wow, I wonder how many times I can do this. Well, the answer is forever <laughs> it's a uh, it's it's the best one it's by far the best one stand here shoot the turret that that's it that, that's all the strategy it takes you're never getting hit here I, well let's let us say never i have probably fired a thousand rounds at the turrets in this position in tests with a bb gun and i have never once been struck by a bullet from the turret so if you got a nine mil if you got a 22 whatever as long as you can do a single point of damage you'll eventually kill the turret from complete safety in this position. How about we do it some more just to prove the point? Nope. Never gonna hit me. So yeah, just stand in this position, shoot the turret. Now, if you don't happen to have the night vision range to spot the turret from this position, just use the blind fire like I did with the reach attack. So if we go ahead and take away my super night vision here. Get rid of that. Yeah. So we have no night vision whatsoever. We just got our Perception 11 that gives us our three range. One, two, three. I can't see the turret, but I know where it's at because I know it's one, two, three, four, five in. So it's in this position right here, which is... Eh, how many How many is that from there? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five to there. One, two, three, four in. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, so it's in that position. So I need to go to this position here and then go four to the right. So let's get a bigger gun out. Let's go ahead and get the M4 out. And we'll shoot it with the M4 from here without being able to see it. So I'm going to go to fire mode. I'm going to go ahead and move the cursor down to that position. And I'm going to go over four more. The cursor is going to disappear, but it is actually moving. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to tap the P key for precise aim. And for some reason, it takes a few taps. All right. Apparently it takes a whole lot of taps. Hmm. That's a little weird. Why is it doing that? One, two, three, four. There we go. We got the shot off that time. I'm not sure why it's taking so many taps. One, two, three, four. That is weird. All right. Well, let's go check the turret. Yeah, it's dead. We killed it long ago. <laughs> so... It's a little weird behavior with the uh, the precise aim key. I had to tap it a whole bunch of times before it actually fired off. That's a little new, but uh, yeah, you're completely safe from this position. Now, do not turn on the light. If you turn on a light, it will shoot you and kill you. So be very cautious of that. This is not a safe position with the light on. You'll definitely get tagged. But for its blind fire ability, for whatever reason, it is unable to hit this particular position. Take this with a grain of salt and uh, do some careful testing yourself because as the, the time goes by, they may fix this one or make an adjustment because it does essentially render that turret uh, completely useless and easy to kill with any kind of a gun. So there you go. That is everything you need to know about turrets. A little longer than I expected it to take to go through all the info, but I hope you find it valuable. 
As always, let me know in the comments what you think of the uh, the episode. If you have any ideas for future episodes, I'm always happy to take those, and I'll try to get them out as quick as I can. And hope you stay safe out there. Good day. <laughs>